I backed the Keychron K3 Pro on Kickstarter back in November of 2022, and I have enjoyed using it. But in my comparison to the Nufi Air 75, one thing that it lacked was a 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection, only having Bluetooth. But now, a little over a year after the K3 Pro came out, Keychron has released the K3 Max, an updated 75% low profile mechanical keyboard, now with a 2.4 gigahertz connection with a high polling rate. So is it worth upgrading to the K3 Max? Let's find out. Before we dive in, I wanna mention that Keychron sent me one of these K3 Max keyboards for the purpose of making a review. I ordered the other one here as soon as it came out because I actually didn't know Keychron was gonna to offer to send me one and I really wanted to check it out. So that means I get to give one away. So go ahead and subscribe if you wanna know when I have the giveaway set up and apologies in advance if you're watching this well after the video was released and the giveaway is over, but check out the community tab for the channel to see if I have any other giveaways currently going. Now I'm not an affiliate with Keychron, but if the K3 Max is available through Amazon, I will put an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Okay, so I gave away the big update here with the K3 Max, which is the 2.4 gigahertz connection. Keychron has also added a 2.4 gigahertz connection to a few other keyboards that they've either recently announced or released. That includes the V1 Max and the Q1 Max. Now the K3 Max that I personally ordered here, I also changed the keycaps because I also at the same time ordered a set of Keychron's low profile LSA die sub keycaps in this white color option. So I'll give a few comments about those as well in just a moment. But what else has been updated or changed? We'll talk about that in just a second. First, let's run through the features and specs of the K3 Max and do our usual sound test. The K3 Max is a 75% keyboard with 84 keys and an ANSI layout. At the time of recording, it is not available in an ISO layout, but Keychron offers many keyboards in an ISO layout, so it's possible it may be available in the future. The case, which is very thin, has an aluminum top plate and an ABS bottom. The dimensions are 306 by 116 by 22 millimeters with a weight of 525 grams. There are three available typing angles with two position fold out feet. Connectivity includes Bluetooth for up to three devices, 2.4 gigahertz with a 1000 hertz polling rate and USB-C wired also with a 1000 hertz polling rate. There is an operating system switch on the back to change between pre-programmed Mac and Windows layouts as well as a separate switch for the connection modes. Backlighting is north-facing RGB with 22 modes. The keycaps are not shined through, but they are double-shot PBT and have a slight forward slant. The battery capacity is 1550 milliamp hours with an estimated use time of up to 78 hours with the backlighting off or up to 40 hours with the backlighting on the lowest setting. The K3 Max features QMK firmware and is via compatible for remapping and adding macros. The K3 Max has a price of $114 through Keychron's website for the hot swappable RGB version and $104 for the RGB non-hot swap option or $94 for the white backlight non-hot swap option. Okay, so since this is an updated version of the K3, instead of doing pros and cons, we're gonna talk about what's improved, what's the same, and what still could be improved. And we'll be taking this in reference to the K3 Pro, not the original K3, though I will mention the original K3 a little bit later. So first up, let's talk about improvements. Now, as I mentioned, the 2.4 gigahertz connection with a 1000 hertz polling rate is the biggest upgrade here because the K3 Pro didn't have any 2.4 gigahertz connection. We've still, however, got the Bluetooth for three devices, but that polling rate is only 90 hertz, where the 2.4 gigahertz connection is 1000 hertz. So that's the same polling rate as the wired connection, definitely what you'd wanna use for gaming or anything that requires that higher polling rate. And the good news here is that not only is it an added connection, a fourth wireless connection, but in my experience, the connection has been very solid and reliable with a reasonable range. It seemed very stable, never missed any key presses. It just worked. 
But if you do experience any issues with the placement of your 2.4 gigahertz receiver, Keychron also gives you this little sort of adapter for the USB cable so that you can actually plug in the USB receiver into one end, plug the USB cable into the other end, and this allows you to reposition the receiver to get it closer to your keyboard if necessary. Now, another improvement that you can't see by looking at the K3 Max is that Keychron has added some sound dampening in the form of IXPE and latex foam that was not in the original K3 Pro. Let me know down in the comments if you think that made a difference in the sound that you heard during the sound tests comparing the K3 Pro to the K3 Max. And that's actually it for the improvements. There are more things that have actually not changed from the K3 Pro to the K3 Max. So let's talk about what's the same. All right, first of all, we have QMK firmware with VIA compatibility. So now the, the K3 Pro is on the bottom of the screen here in the overhead view and K3 Max is on the top. So they share the same firmware. They both are QMK with VIA compatibility. You also still have a switch on the back, a physical switch with a pre-programmed layer for Mac and Windows layouts. So that is the same. They both also feature Keychron's low profile PBT keycaps. You just have a different color theme between them. At the time of release, there is only one color option for the K3 Max. It is this gray theme. But in terms of the keycaps themselves, they are still double shot PBT and they still have this ever so slight forward slant. This is very subjective. I personally don't love the slight forward slant where the front, the closer side, of the keycaps is slightly taller than the back. Now, one thing that's the same but different at the same time has to do with battery life. It actually has the same battery capacity as the K3 Pro, 1550 milliamp hour. However, the battery life, at least the expected life, is different from the K3 Pro to the K3 Max. I'll put them both on the screen. The K3 Max expected battery life with no lighting on is only 78 hours, whereas the K3 Pro was actually over 100 hours of expected battery life with no lighting on. So the capacity is the same, but the battery life expectation is a little bit lower. I'm not sure if that is accounting for the 2.4 gigahertz connection if you're using it. Maybe that draws a little bit more power from the battery than Bluetooth does. I'm honestly not sure, but personally, a little disappointed in a decreased battery life expectation here. So you're gonna hear about this again in the things that could be improved section. Another thing that hasn't changed is the switch options. You still have Gatoron low profile 2.0 switch options. You have red, brown, and blue. So no difference there in terms of the switches you can get in the K3 Max. And lastly, we have the folding feet. So this is no different between the K3 Pro and the K3 Max. You've got two position fold out feet and you also still have the same positioning of the rubber feet so that when it's in the flat position, these do not rest on keys if you wanna use this sitting on top of a laptop. So both of them, the Pro and the Max, can be used sitting on top of a laptop deck. If you like to use your uh, low profile keyboard that way, sitting on top of your laptop, you're good to go there. All right, so that's it for the things that are the same between the K3 Pro and the K3 Max. Before we move on to what still has room for improvement, let me just give you my thoughts on the keycap set that I bought to go with the uh, K3 Max here. So this is Keychron's LSA low profile die sub keycap set. So it is not double shot, but die sub, which means there is no second layer of material here. So this is just one thick layer of material versus on the, the stock keycaps that come on it, you have a double shot here. So um, the difference being your legends are the double shot material. And with die sub, this is ink that is sublimated onto the surface to basically become part of the surface of the keycap. So these feel, the die sub keycaps do have a tiny bit more of a thicker, heavier feel to them, but there's not much difference here. Where you will see a difference is actually in the legends themselves. If you look closely, I'll give you some close up footage side by side. The legends on the double shot keycaps definitely look a little bit more crisp. The legends on the die sub keycaps are a little bit more bold, they're thicker, but they also are not quite as crisp. One difference that is a little bit frustrating that I want to point out is the wobble that you get or the stability with the enter key especially. If you look at the enter key here on the K3 Max, the stock keycaps, there's a tiny little bit of wobble if you put your two fingers on the extreme edges and wobble them back and forth. It will move for you, but not a lot. Whereas this enter key on the set that I bought separately, there is a ton of wobble here and it will even stay sort of in an off position. If you press down on one side, it will pop up the other side. And that is because the stems are not the same length here. I'll try my best to give you a super close up shot so you can see here, but the stem in the center of this enter key is just a tiny bit longer 
than the stems on the uh, for the stabilizers. So there's a little bit of play, and that's why it wobbles, which is unfortunate. Like I said, I don't have it on the other stabilized keys. There's no problem with backspace or the left shift or the space bar. It's just this enter key. Okay, so now let's talk about what still has room for improvement on the K3 Max in general here. So let's return to the battery life. The battery life at 78 hours with the uh, backlighting off is not the greatest in terms of competition on the market. And actually it's lower than the K3 Pro, the uh, immediate predecessor to the K3 Max. It is a little better than the original K3, which I think is in the version two right now. But in terms of competition on the market, for example, the Nufi Air 75 V2, another 75% low profile keyboard, has a battery life of over 200 hours with the backlighting off. It also has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, so much bigger battery capacity, but just much longer expected battery life with the lights turned off compared to the K3 Max. Now you should be able to go your Monday to Friday without charging it if you're not using the backlighting. And that's not terrible, but again, in reference to the rest of the market and what we know is possible in 2023 going into 2024, under 100 hours of use time, a little disappointing. Now, another thing that I would put in the room for improvement category would be the stabilizer performance. This is not specific to the K3 Max, but really all of Keychron's low profile keyboards. I personally have never had any low profile keyboard from Keychron that didn't have some rattle sounds coming from the stabilizers. The enter key over here on this one's not bad, but the space bar always seems to have a considerable amount of rattle on Keychron's low profile keyboards, at least on every one that I've ever had. I've always felt like the stabilizers are a little noisier than what I would like. And the last thing I would say, this is more of a wish list item, not necessarily improvement, but something that I would like to see because they did it with the V1 Max. With the V1 Max, they actually give you two different USB receivers for the 2.4 gigahertz connection. They give you the USB-A receiver, like the one that comes with the K3 Max, but they also give you a USB-C receiver that you can plug directly into things like a MacBook that don't have a USB-A port. Any device that only has USB-C, you have a USB-C receiver with the V1 Max. They don't give you one of those with the K3 Max though. They only give you USB-A. The K3 Max is one that I am more likely to use with like my MacBook standalone instead of with a dock because it is low profile and more portable. So if anything, I would think this keyboard is the one to give me those adapters so that I can plug this either wired or using 2.4 gigahertz directly into my MacBook without needing to supply my own adapters. All right, so all that said, is it worth upgrading if you have the K3 original or the K3 Pro here? Well, if you have the K3 Pro, there's not much different here except for the 2.4 gigahertz connection. So unless you really need that, then you don't need the K3 Max if you've got the K3 Pro. But if you do have the original K3 and you would like to upgrade to something customizable, because the original K3 is not QMK, no via compatibility, and it doesn't have the 2.4 gigahertz connection, and those two things would make a difference for you, then it might be worth upgrading to the K3 Max from the original K3. And now in general, if you're in the market for a 75% low profile keyboard, I do think the K3 Max is worth considering at least because it does offer a lot of features for a price of just barely over $100. There are other options like the Nufi Air 75 V2, which I think you should also consider. And I will be doing a detailed comparison video of the K3 Max to the Air 75 V2. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see that. Once I have that detailed comparison of the Air 75 V2 to the K3 Max, I will link to it in the description and right up here in the corner. So go check that out if you haven't. Thanks everybody. See you next time.